infinity. So scale factor, the biggest thing that we need to make sure that we're all doing correctly is it is always, guys, I'm telling you, some of you are doing this wrong because I check your homework and I don't like mark it wrong. It's the new compared to the original. So whatever they tell you the new shape is, or we're going A to B, or this one to that one, you have to put the new one on top. So if the new shape is bigger, we're going to get a scale factor that's more than one. If the new shape is smaller, we're going to get a scale factor that's between zero and one. And in your math notes, there is pretty much this because I chopped it up and put it in your math notes. So if you need that reminder, go to the math notes and get that reminder. I need cards. So Claire, real difficult when we look at A here, what is our scale So original goes to the new half. Our scale factor here, if we set up new to original or new to original, or if they gave us, like, all of those ratios should be identical. So Laurel, help me out with B. slide because this would be like a guys I gotta I don't know if we've talked about this this year how the textbook is created is for like regular eighth graders taking eighth grade math you're not you're better than that right like hate to say it but like y'all are better than like regular eighth graders taking regular eighth grade math you're on the accelerated track like the advanced track right so like sometimes we skip over stuff or move faster because the textbook is made for like regular pace we didn't sign up for regular pace, we signed up for the faster pace. So if you need more review on scale factor, you might want to come work with me. So here we have our study team, let's say like a table full of people, and they're asked to find the scale factor here. And Claudia, Isaac, and Paula don't quite agree with each other, so I want you guys to turn to your teammates and see who you agree with, or are they just arguing for no good reason, which sometimes Yeah, something changed on my computer recently that now it's showing little pen icon things. This is not that difficult to see that those are equal to each other because the one ratio is just double the other. What's weirder to see is the 21 over 6, which that's why Will said they're all equal to 3 and a half. So if we did this division, we'd get 3.5, we'd get 3.5, we'd get 3.5. So our class. 
Claudia, Isaac, and Paula actually disagreeing? No. 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 There are various ways to solve math problems, which is why it's awesome, but also why it's tough. You doing something different, like, so if Beatrix and Amir write down two different things, does that mean one person's right and one person's wrong? No. No. It may be. Like, yeah, maybe, but not necessarily. There are different ways to do it, pretty much every work that actually physics did, every problem that we're going to work from here on out. Because, guys, you're getting into the deeper math, and the deeper math has options. So, like the first one that we saw, if we know the scale factor, is five fourths right? That's the only decimal we have. Why can't it be five decimal? Huh? How can we figure out x and y here? So turn to your teammates. Talk about how can we figure out x and y here? I want us to try to only use multiplication. Sorry, let's also say that. Let's only use multiplication. Six and not the four that we take from that shape. Because the, the four correlates to the five, not the six. Uh, so the X. I'm just pushing back against Alex to push back against everyone. Before you start doing your work, check the orientation of your shapes. I'm telling you guys, there are trap doors all over the place, and a new one that's going to start happening is when you look at two shapes that are similar, the one shape will be like this, and the one shape will be like, like they're going to turn it differently. And you got to make sure that you're actually matching up the correct sides that match each other. So Alex said, take six, multiply by five fourths. If I want to do this math in my head, I can do six times five is 30, divided by four. I know 30 divided by two is 15, divide that again, seven and a half? Yes. Yes. Correct moment. Sweet. Ooh. Ella, how could I get to Y? I said we only really want to multiply. I'm not really a fan of division. Oh, my bad. Um, You're right. What you said is right, but I don't like division. Uh, but this is my like classroom. Way. I get to determine if we're going to divide or not, and I don't want to divide. Do you want to open it? I divide. Do you want to throw it to Gus? Yeah. Gus? So instead of dividing by five fourths, we could multiply by four fifths. If you're going the opposite direction, just use the reciprocal and we can still multiply. Thank you, guys. So that'd be 40 over five, eight? Yes. Yep. Question. I don't know how. Try it. Don't ask me. Try it. Go get one. And if there's none back there, people are leaving them in the bin. Just a, guys, don't know the highlighters. Guys, you don't know where the highlighters went. Be a trick. No, I Be a trick. No, I just be a highlighter tonight. All right, let's see it. Let's uh, let's test our skills. 
Let's find all the missing sides on all of these. direction would be easier in my mind going this way is easier so I'm going to call this guy the new one just to make my life easier at least in my opinion now you can divide if you want to up to you you're your own person you live your own life you make your own mistakes Yeah, guys, you got to be on the lookout for calculators around the building. I don't know where my calculators have gone, but it seems like we're lacking them, like in this room that we are lacking them. There aren't any orientation or pages, right? Because it doesn't look like there are yet, but on your practice work, I don't know if it's happening yet, but it's gonna. They're gonna start to do it. Like, I can't guarantee it has happened already, but I promise you it's going to. skill factor is 3, so 9 times 3 leaves y as 27. Simon, what about getting back to that x? Beatrix, when you come over to part B, do you want to find X or Y? Well, actually, I guess before we can find X or Y, we probably need the scale factor. Beatrix, you want to find X, Y, or Z down here? Well, help me at least find the scale factor. Okay. Um, this is negative 120. If we go from the little one to the big one, and we call this our new, yeah, what do we multiply by? We can figure out it's 2.5. So, talk me through getting one of them. Oh, because if we go this way and take 25, to, or Beatrix might have just recognized, oh, if yeah. these are the same, these are the same, and Y is going to be 10. Questions on finding that Y? Aura, help me find X or Z there. 
even if you haven't done this yet, Beatrix told us the scale factor is 2.5. Because we're still going this way from small to big. So 8 times 2 point, well, 8 times 2 is 16. Another half of 8. What'd you get? 20. So then, Owen, if we're going this way, what do I do? Say more. Say more. So you're saying do times 2.5? We're going the opposite direction now. So if we're using 2.5 as our scale factor, I guess we can divide. I, I, cause the, or we could have called the scale factor 5 halves, right? Because what else is 2 and a half, 5 halves? So here, if we want to multiply, we could just multiply by 2 fifths going this direction, if we really want to multiply. But what do we get for x? Seven. Seven. I don't know that we're going to take the time to totally do these. If I go from small to big, which I think is the easier way when they don't tell us which is which, what's the scale factor here? Not if I'm calling this one the new. 24 over 9. I think we can both divide by 3. 8 thirds. So wait. 2 and 2 thirds. Guys, if you type this into your calculator, 24 divided by 9, you get a really bad number. It's repeating forever. And like we said, our calculator can't actually quite do that accurately. So here, what's better, the fraction or the decimal? The fraction. The fraction, I'm telling you. A lot of times the fraction is better. And then down here, if I do the same and say we're going to go this way, what's our scale factor here? Which would reduce to? So either 3 halves or 1.5. I would not use a mixed number like one and a half. Three halves is better than using one and a half, but 1.5, that, that's fine. 1.5 would be fine. Questions here? All right, let's keep rolling. So if this shape gets enlarged by a scale factor of two, what will its new area be? If this gets enlarged by a scale factor of two, what is its new area? Well, I guess we need to figure out the current area first. I can be your team. What do you think, uh, Mitch? Alright, so what's the area of the current shape? said the area is going to double point oh. you're wrong that is the trap door now i'll let you talk about it in a minute but i want to draw it first if this doubles it becomes one two three four five six if this doubles it becomes one two three four and then if this doubles it's too tall and too wide for that triangular piece. Since the length doubled and the height doubled, how many times did we actually double? We doubled twice because we did times two here and we did times. 
times two here. We really did times four. So what actually happens to area? The area change will be your scale factor. We think it's times two. So our scale factor here was two. To what? Like it's not, I'm not done. I just like I wrote that down. Scale factor. Let's imagine, let's imagine this was times three. If I did times three to the height, times three to the width, times three, times three, what did I actually do? Times nine. Times nine. Guys, it is the scale factor squared. What happens to your area is actually whatever your scale factor, because that's a linear scale factor. Linear scale factor. Not area scale. To get the area scale, we have to do it to the length and the height. So it squares that scale factor to mess with the area. Or modify. I shouldn't say mess with, but modify that area. All right. So as we know, Miss Hassanay is a trainiac. Right, as we talked about on the one mask theory that I gave you. I, I made that up, by the way. I like to tell you guys that I'm lying. Keenan loves trains, especially those that run on a narrow gauge track. In case of the track match, how far apart the rails are, he's decided to build a mo model train of the Rio Grande. By the way, if you are a actual model train person, there's an H scale, O scale, K scale. They're, they're labeled with letters. But each scale has a certain ratio of it compared to the original, right? Of like, how big is it actually? My mentor teacher, super into model trains, literally has a train track that runs through his backyard and he does all sorts of like landscaping and stuff around. It's super cool. I'll find the video if I can. So, here's your information. I want you guys to chat with each other. With your team, discuss what you know about the model train Keenan will build. What scale factor should he use? What will be the height of the driving wheels of his model? So here's what your task is. So Go ahead. Give me a second. I'm going to try to look this up. And you've got a teammate. Talk to your teammate first. All right, I texted Kate, his daughter, to see, because I'm struggling to find it. As my mentor teacher used to say, if you don't know what to do, just do whatever. Oh, okay. For real. If you don't know what to do, just do something. For real. All right, so the real, okay, I'm probably going to call the model the new. Right, 
right, so if I just start writing something down, the real track is 36 inches. Okay. Model train track has a gauge of three quarter. Okay, so if I do new compared to original, So if my model's the new and the original is the real, I think I, I'm really dealing with like three fourths compared to 36, but that's not a very nice scale. Now, I could try to force my way up to one compared to something, but there's a little pit stop that I could go to first that would make my life way easier and make me able to do this in my head. Anyone know what that pit stop's gonna be? of opinions, okay? Guys, what if I go to one-fourth first? How can I go from three-fourths to one-fourth? Divide by three. What's 36 divided by three? 36 divided by three. So then how do I go from one-fourth to one? Yeah, and that makes this. There's our scale. One to 48. My train compared to the real thing, it's one compared to the 48 that the actual one would be. So then, the Rio Grande train he wants to build, those train wheels are actually about 44 inches tall. So would that be on the top or on the bottom? The real train wheels are 44 inches. The bottom is where we put the actual, right? The real train is the bigger. So if I know my scale is 148, and I know the actual train has wheels of, ah, uh, man. About 24, 48. Uh, how do I get, if I don't know how to get, um, or if I don't know how to multiply, divide, I guess this might be a time. divided by 48. Because we're trying to figure out what to multiply by. 916. So that is essentially, I mean, that's what we're going to get on top. So wait, if you hit fra uh, math frac to try to change into a fraction, is there, there a... You're going to miss yourself. I don't know. Calcul okay, it's changing the dimension. No, it's there. Well, I was going to show it on the dot camera. There's a button that, well, actually, I think on yours it says frac dec or just df. FD. It switches decimal to fraction, fraction to decimal. Oh. We found it! Okay, did it turn into a nice fraction or not? 11 over 12. Oh! Uh, That's just 11 twelfths. Woo. Now, we don't normally measure inches in twelfths, but that, that's how big it would be. It'd be almost an inch. 11 twelfths of an inch. That's how we deal with that. Questions? Do we have any questions from homework that we need to go over? Sophia Scoville. It reminds me of an Atlas ball. The back of it. Like it circles on the back of the room. Yeah, I mean, if the homework that's getting collected this week is done, you can turn it in. Why am I not collecting 624? What a softie. 
Well, probably because I'm already collecting four homeworks, and that's a lot for me to deal with. Yeah, guys, if you already have all that homework done, just turn it in. Yeah, I have a quick answer. Uh, friends, look at 626. You get a piece of candy, too. So that's 104, right? Here's the triangle that we're supposed to sketch that I 100% did not actually copy paste how I should have, and that's why I'm going to go put it in right now. On 6.2.6. It's a 9, 12, 15, and now I have pasted that into the homework, so next year's class will actually have what they're supposed to. Well, no more candy, because I'm a little loser. Whoa. I mean, um, I'm glad that they're getting Dang. the right information. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Guys, be let's be for real. I'm just glad that they're getting the right information. Oh. That's true. That's true. All right, this looks kind of cool. I got to stop my recording.